Today we're answering the question, which game engine, Godot, Unreal or Unity is best at making a wave-based survival game? One hour, let's get going. So for context, we're starting with already basic movement. We're allowing our participants to start with a little bit of a head start. They've got a character. That was the instruction. Get a character, have them moving, bring them into your engine. And what kind of assets am I using? <laughs> you guessed it. I'm a Sinti fanboy. What do you know? I found a particularly nice um, Kenny asset pack for PlayStation style retro assets. It's becoming clear that Godot and Unity have brought in a bunch of assets and Unreal is making everything from scratch. I kind of feel like two out of three people have maybe cheated a little bit in this battle. So Steven, what's your game plan here? What are you up to? So I have got a vampires like survivor game plan where I'm just going to start with what you would expect. I'm just going to spawn a bunch of zombie like creatures running towards the player. And then I'm going to hold out for just a little bit, I think, to see how far I can get before I start implementing what I think my twist is going to be. Uh, should I spoil it yet? Nah, we'll keep you hesitating for a second. We'll keep you wondering. That's a better phrase, but... Steven, I know you well enough to know when you say I'm going to keep you wondering, it means you've got no idea what you're about to do. So thanks <laughs> yes, for the, thanks for the sub, subterfuge yeah, there. I, yeah, I don't even know what I'm going to do yet, so we'll see. I, sorry, I absolutely love the endless swathes of zombies exploding in the background while you're talking. I'm cheating completely and instead of setting up a spawn point, I'm just gonna put four different like spawn points around my character and then randomly pick them as I spawn enemies. Nice. Why four and why not six? Was there some sort of magic to four? I made, I've made I've made a system like this before. Uh, and when I've done it before, you really can't tell the difference between like four and six as long as they're spawning in different directions. Gotcha. I got a grid map set up. So I just put all of my assets into a thing where I can start drawing those assets around the place. What what are you are you painting there or placing things? How's what's that big box you've got? Uh, the big box, I don't think it's rendering quite right, but that should be the box where I'm placing things. But uh, if anyone looks a bit closer, they definitely aren't rendering in the spot where I'm drawing things at the moment, unfortunately. So Michael, you're using Blueprint rather than C++. Is there a philosophical reason for blue using Blueprint or you just, you prefer it? It's just faster and I prefer yeah. it. I don't really know C++ very well. I find it so similar, but one you like typey, 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 and the other is like drag, click, done. I like drag, click, done. Drag, click, done. And what's the system you're working on there at the moment? Yeah, so I'm setting up my um, idle and run animations and I'm cheating and not using like an animation blueprint like I normally. Let's give that a whirl. Okay, we've got a level. Okay, Bram's got a tank. Bram's going for the tank approach. Cool. And a laser beam. I like it. <laughs> and so Bram, you I heard you mentioning something about PS1 textures. Yes. So I I really so it's uh Kenny's retro PS1 pack. So it's all of these really nice, really chunky pixelated textures. Obviously use closest rather than uh, linear texture filtering so that you can actually see all the pixels. But uh, I think it just looks so evocative of games as I know them from my youth. Steven, looks like you're typing some code there as opposed to just cheating with Copilot, so... <laughs> yeah, a little bit of both. Whenever Copilot fails me, I have to actually think. Trucks. I'm going to have trucks that try and ram into the player. That's that's my plan. Unreal has a reputation for being very resource intensive. Oh no! Oh no! Unreal crash! Unreal crash! Did you save it recently? I hope so. But Bram, you were having an issue just then where your camera was slowing down as you are playing Godot. Has Godot changed much recently or is it just that you're trying to shove everything into it and it's like, whoa? I wish I could explain. I can only assume I'm doing such resource intensive PlayStation 1 <laughs> graphics that my computer couldn't possibly keep up with it. Okay, we're 10 minutes in, so this is a good stage to deliver milestone number one. There you go, we're, we've, we've, got, we've got a vampire survivors, we're done. Check it out. There you go. Those are all Sinti assets and Sinti animations as well. Oh boy. It is. Man, This guy, I've got a little World War Z vibe going right here. This is a good visual representation of what I look like at the club. You know, I'd really, man, would it be too much of a detour to just randomize which zombie mesh is being instantiated every single time? Can you show us that? So inside of each, basically inside the mesh, They've just got, you know, however many this is, two or three different dozen meshes that I can just kind of like turn off and on. So I just need to kind of like 
drop all of them in sort of some side of game object array and then just randomize which one is turned on every single time it's instantiated. And then I think we'll just see what that looks like. You can tell Bram's participated in a battle before because at the end of it, everyone just looks at how pretty does it look. Don't care about the code, don't care about the features. It's like, oh wow, nice trees. Who needs lines of code? Oh yeah, Michael, we've been going easy on you as a newbie to the battle scene, but um, what are you up to at the moment? I'm not too nervous. I think I got time, but um, I'm nervous that my game's gonna be really boring compared to the other two. <laughs> I am making an enemy. So AI, you've got it move to player. So that looks like a pretty simple, just move to the player. You're putting in some um, some rules for that or just run to the player? It's pretty much just gonna run to the player. Right now, um, I'm using a really complicated like character movement. Look how, I think we've already got like a little vampire survivors game going. That looks kind of cool. Doesn't this remind you of World War Z? No. Bram, I'm really worried that you're not working on gameplay over there, that you're still placing trees. All right, fine, I'll, I'll do something. I need a way to spawn enemies. That's something I should think about. It does it, it does it. I've got two cannons. <laughs> <laughs> How are you handling it, Bran? Are you doing many waves or just one big old continuous wave the latter so you, you probably want it to get more difficult as time goes on so if you increase it at the start it's one per second and then can you increase that rate after a certain amount of time has elapsed i can actually that's that sounds like a good idea i think the funniest games are the ones where you end up with way too many enemies and your game just becomes ridiculous or crashes or cra oh yeah or crashes so you're being chased by trucks that's awesome let's turn our attention to unreal there's there's Two things chasing, they're running at the dude. That's three things, nice. but yes. Steven, have you got a lantern festival happening there? Is this like Chinese New Year? No, I'm stressing actually, I, I need. Well, all right, I guess now is the time to uh, spoil my goal, but we're in the middle of bug zone because these are not working properly yet. The goal is to get these lanterns basically being tugged around by my player. And we're just gonna have like this giant guy just like yanking a rope kind of swinging them around, and then they're gonna blow up the zombies whenever they hit the zombies. That's that's the goal. So far we've got Bram with Godot has got trucks running at a tank. We've got Michael in Unreal uh, making a game that's all about you have to play within Blueprint. Uh, and then the famous Stephen Hubbard running around the streets. Look at that, you feel the emotion from the character. He's practically hugging the person playing the game. There's, you were jealous of Bram's tank, weren't you? And you're like, I'm gonna make my guy a tank. So Bram, can you talk us through the code you, you're building here at the moment? So I, I chucked a square root into a function and I'm just making it work all higgledy-piggledy. Although now I think about it, it might not work, but we'll see. Nice, doing actual programming on the fly here. I'm thinking about doing like an upgrade system where you pick up upgrades and then that like increases your like progress or whatever and that, sure, that like determines like the difficulty of the game. That increase the difficulty of the game. That seems a little bit, did I hear you correct? That seems backwards. When you pick up the upgrades, you get stronger, but it also makes all the enemies stronger. I want the weapon you fire to get better. Is it exactly what we talked about before, where it explodes when it hits things? It won't explode, but my computer might. Okay, it's not... okay so... <laughs> so it's not working. <laughs> No, I'm stressing actually, I, I need, I don't know what this is gonna look like, but just to try, I'm gonna give myself 20 exploding lanterns. And basically the goal is kind of, <laughs> well, you can see that every single time they hit a zombie, <laughs> I don't know what it's doing, but every time it hits a zombie, it <laughs> blows the zombie It's a fun up. effect. It seems very unconnected to it's what broken. the player is doing, it's but it's cool. Okay, so we've had about half an hour go and half an hour remaining-ish. It appears you haven't cheated as much as the other two. Not doing any cheating whatsoever. Rookie move. Losing my mind. It's not printing, why don't you work? So clearly something's going wrong. So you've got a bit of debug in there. Why don't you work? Okay, that's a good way of doing it. What? Steven, that's an improvement. <laughs> uh, Steven, can I distract you for a minute? Steven. Oh, I'm not, I am not happy. I don't know what is going on. I, oh my gosh, I think we, Finally got it. I don't even know how that happened. I must have just like, when I was rushing, I think I was locking the angular motion on each individual configurable joint. It's it's at least, okay, now it's at least working like, at least more or less as intended. Like, 
a whip is supposed to work, at least how you would expect it to kind of work. So at least we're not broken anymore. We're making progress, baby. Bram, I, I think this is an improvement. Thank you. I upped the time scale by three so I could test. That's what I did in my game last time. Remember when everything was moving too slow and I just upped the time scale of the entire game? This is the best thing I've ever made. So we've got 10 minutes left. I have sand. Nice. I want some buildings. Here we go. We're going to see rapid environment design by an unreal expert here. Just like, go for it. Hey, Steven, do you have any plans of changing your floor? It's relatively low on the priority list at the moment, but what do you got for me? Something better. I, I've got a little bit of a backup plan. I, I don't even think it's going to work, but I, if I have enough time and maybe we'll just do it right now to appease the uh, gods of Rick. Are you seriously just importing an entire scene? This seems a, this seems a new low in battle prefabrication. Oh, make sure everyone saves their project. Whew. So this is gonna... <gasps> oh yeah, no. Oh no, Unreal Crash, Unreal Crash. Did you save it recently? I hope so. No. <laughs> Let's see how much was lost. I probably lost all my buildings I just put down. Oh no, I've lost so much. Ah, oh, it always happens to the Unreal guy. Classic. I could do it. How much time we got? Five minutes. I don't got it. <laughs> so we got two minutes left to jam in the last couple of features you can come up with. Make sure you save regularly. Now, one minute remaining. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now we're in business, baby. 10 seconds left. Three, two, one, and stop. Okay, so Michael, take us through what you've got. Sure, all right. So this being my first jam, or my first uh, battle, I wasn't entirely sure how many assets we were allowed to use and how much prep we could do. I started with a pretty simple uh, top-down character controller uh, template. Uh, I added a projectile so I could shoot the enemy. Um, yeah, and then at the end there, I decided it needed to be a little more exciting, so I started trying to tweak values, but I didn't have a ton of time to balance, so. What's the little, like, glitch effect that you have? It's it's actually just a flicker effect. I was going like old school, like arcade styles. Yeah, like when you take yeah, damage, you kind yeah. of flicker. That's all it does. And so what are your pickups that you're picking up there? Mm. Yeah, okay, yeah. So they drop, They have 50, right now they have a 50% chance to drop a pickup when they die. Um, right now you can get a power up or a, a damage boost pickup. That's what this fist one is. This one's a projectile speed, um, which might be dangerous right now with how fast it's already going. <laughs> um, and then there's a movement speed one and then health. Can you, can you show us a little bit of your blueprint structure? Yeah, so I have my top-down character here, and basically it, I'm setting up some spawn locations for the enemies, adding some widget to the screen, or my, adding my health bar widget to the screen, and then kind of initializing it, and then this is just triggering my loops. You made all your own animations as well? Um, so I did not. I actually did cheat there. Um, I threw the, I threw, I, I got the characters. Uh, meshes and they came with animations but they were a lot of money and I decided it wasn't worth buying them for this. So you brought in Mixamo animations and hooked them up to your characters. Nice. Cool, so you've got spawning the enemies, you've got pickups, you've got a health system and this all seemed to be created from scratch today so nice work for uh, cheating the least out of everyone. Okay Bram, show us your show us your cheaty pre-prepared particle effect uh, with awesome tank action. So I got to use a bunch of Kenny's like PS1 graphics, which I think meant I could be very forgiving to myself in terms of there's like, there are no animations in here to speak of. It's just all particles. The, the only literal bit of animation involved is that the, uh, the actual um, top of the cannon actually knocks back whenever you shoot. Funda yeah, fundamentally what's going on is whenever you kill the next highest square number of enemies, so once you kill 4, then 9, then 16, then 25, uh, it upgrades the tank, and all it does is it takes the top that was already on the tank, and it duplicates it, and then it shifts it to a new position. Can you show us that, that mechanism of upgrading in your code? So, what I've got is if I go over to the player script, I've got the tank here, I added a little node that's just an upgrade tracker and that just listens to the number of enemies that are killed, and when it gets above a certain bracket, it makes the player add a new cannon. And then you just need to choose where you want that cannon to go. So I just made this list of valid positions for the cannon to go in, which there are loads. I also added a bit of post-processing. There's, um, there's a shader that's uh, running over the camera that I just grabbed uh, from Godot's asset lib. Thanks, man. Yeah, really good. Really good. Okay, Steven... Um... 
talk us through. And the goal here is we have this big old dumb looking ogre that has these kind of lamp bombs that you can kind of drag around and swing them around as kind of like your vampire survivors-esque only weapon. You can see it's working okay. I think the configurable joint on each individual bomb or lamp is getting a little bit wonky once a certain amount of them get destroyed. So I'm not really actually sure what's going on there through code. But the way that this really works is each individual time I pick up a pickup or just on this rope to begin with, I can basically start a certain amount of segments that I want. So I could actually just change this to say something like 20 and it'll just spawn in 20 configurable joint game object prefabs. So on each individual prefab, it has this configurable joint component. I feel like I've said that a lot this video. Don't really ask me too much about it. I'm just kind of using the settings relatively out of the box, other than just kind of tweaking some of these X, Y, and Z drive settings to kind of change how springy each individual, like the tension is in between each joint. So every single time I'm adding a point, I'm basically just going into the last joint attached to it and then just adding in another one and then just making sure the rigid body is attached correctly is I've also got this line render to give that rope-like effect kind of in between each game object. You know, if you actually just toggle on the stats window over here, you can even see with what is very quickly gonna be hundreds of different zombies spawning and running towards me. You can see I've still got, you know, 55 FPS. We're dropping down to 50 pretty quickly. So who needs dots, I say? Who needs an entity component system, I say? Uh, I, sorry, I absolutely love the endless swathes of zombies exploding in the background while you're talking. They're just getting iced on mass. So there we have it, three fairly different projects and three fairly different amounts of cheating. We have Godot, Unreal, and Udini. Let us know in the comments below who you think won this battle and which game engine you would prefer to make a wave-based survival game. See you again soon.